This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. How many women who are married today fail to receive the treatment that a grown woman deserves? That somehow or another they got married and became a little girl again. You see, when a man does things like that, there's an area of brokenness like I had in my life that he's got to deal with. Because that woman of God, that woman of faith, that woman that gave birth to your children, that woman that loves you, that woman that cooks and takes care of you, that woman that does all that for you, deserves to be treated like a grown woman. I can hear you saying amen right now. Get your daily dose of grace on the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. With the Changing Your World podcast, you have encouraging and life-changing wisdom at your fingertips 24-7. Gain a revelation of the fullness of God's grace from Creflo Dollar's powerful sermons. Tune in whenever you need to be edified, no matter where you are. Subscribe to Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. What happens when you are around a society of a bunch of broken people and they are escalating vengeance? All they're doing is thinking about how am I going to get you back? And somehow uh, you never really feel satisfied when you do something like that. You think you will, but you're not. It really takes a bigger person to know that somebody has wronged me and I, I can just forgive them and I can just walk away and I'm not going to retaliate. I just trust God. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, you know, rent space in my mind where you're concerned. I'm going to go on. Peace is my most valuable asset. I'm not going to spend it on your drama. And so we can't get involved in that. But you find a person who, you know, they're wanting to, to, to retaliate. I, one of the things I see is in, in broken marriages. Uh, and, and, and people get hurt and they get broken, and sometimes one of the spouses spend all their life just trying to retaliate. What can I do to retaliate? Oh, you miss one payment on your child care. I'm going to retaliate. I'm going to put you in jail. Oh, I'm going I'm to I'm do something to hurt you because I've been hurting so long and I never got it. I'm going to get you back. You, you, you're, you're stuck, man. You, you're stuck right where you are. You're not going to be able to go any farther in life because that brokenness is causing you to demonstrate this escalating vengeance and retaliation. It's not God's way. Like I said before, you'll go no further than your willingness to resolve and to deal with the brokenness that's in your life. Let's look at the next one. You're familiar with this one, selfishness. Selfishness. Looking out only for self. I mean, this is a great way to end up alone, looking out only for self. <laughs> That's a great way to end, all by, end up all by yourself, both friends and romantic relationships, looking out for yourself. You see, uh, it's good to take care of yourself, and, and I'm not saying you shouldn't. It's good to take care of yourself, but why? So you can pour some of you into somebody else. It, it's, I'm taking care of myself so I can pour some of me into somebody else. Wow. It, it, it's, it's, I'm taking care of myself so, so if I should, if, let's say you're single, if I should fall in love with a, a person that's broken, that I can now pour some of myself into that person to help them out. I mean, we don't really think about that. And I'm not talking about being selfish just for you, but I really want to make sure that I am healed of brokenness and I resolve that brokenness so that I can have something to give in a relationship. You know, good relationships will happen when you are 
giving advantage and not just taking advantage. If you go into a relationship and all you're interested in is, what have you done for me lately? Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> if that's all you're interested in, that's going to end up being a toxic relationship. Because after a while, you're going to realize, I am always doing the giving. And what is it that causes a person to get into a relationship and think you need to just keep giving to me? It's a broken person. It's a broken person who goes into a relationship and that should be a sign and a signal, oh my goodness, this, person, this is going to be a toxic relationship because they're not ever given the advantage. You know, sometimes people say, I don't know why I keep drawing the same kind of person. No, it, it's not really that you're drawing the same kind of bad person. It's, it's, it's more likely that you're ignoring the, 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 the simple signs at the very beginning of the relationship. In, in other words, you keep, you keep ignoring the signs. I mean, the signs are right there at the very beginning, and somehow you're thinking, oh, I don't want to see that right now because I really want a relationship. And then it, all, it's in, it, all, it all ends up the same way because, you know, it's, it's, it's called brokenness. You keep ignoring the brokenness. And, and somehow you think, well, I'll just go ahead and take this person in my life, and I, I know it's toxic for me to just give the advantage, give them the advantage and never receive. And then when the relationship doesn't work out, you get upset and say, I don't know why I keep drawing the same person. No, I don't know why you don't look at the signs of brokenness so you won't engage in it. Praise God. Let's look at another one. Complacency. Complacency. That's, that's a person, they, they don't even try. They don't even try. They're complacent. They, they don't try to understand they don't try to be nice. They're complacent. And, you know, if you want me, you just got to take me like I am. They're complacent. And I thought, well, you know, maybe that's just a part of somebody's personality to be complacent. Nah. That's a sign of bro brokenness. They're complacent. Oh, they're just, no, no, no. They're broken. They're broken somewhere along the line. There's a fear. There's a bunch of doubt. You don't know I tried this when I was 10. It never happened. You know, I went to do that, and it didn't work out right. And over a series of time, in order to stop from hurting so much, I'm just going to be complacent. And you got all of this stuff piled up on complacency that is a result of a broken and a contrite spirit. Now, let's look at this next one, keeping score. Keeping score. Poor, I remember me doing this. It's, 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 the, it's the instant someone starts tallying, uh, tallying up who does what and how much they do. And, and uh, when you start doing that, you know, well, they do this much and, and I do that much and, and which one is a slacker and, and, and which one is, is resentment. Dude, nah, -uh. you, you, can, you, you, can, you can pick that up real quick. That's a big sign, you know. Well, didn't I do these three things? And then you get to arguing about, well, you know, I, I, I at least did this. No, don't do that. See, because this is the thing about being genuine. When you, when you genuinely do something from your heart, you won't need validation. And when a person is, 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 is keeping the score, this person is hungry to be validated. And, and, and that's brokenness, dude. That, that's somebody who says, you know, I, I, I got to start tallying up what I do and how much I do, and, and it happens in marriages. You know, I do this, I do that, I do that, I do that, I do that, and all you do is do that. Well, they're hurting. They feel like I got to tally the score up because you, you're, not, you're, not, you're not giving them praise and you're not giving them thanks. There's something that's going on on the other side where a person says, I'm broken, that's why I need to keep score because you... You ain't, you, you, you keep telling me what you do, like I don't do nothing. You know, that's an attack against your worth, like you don't do anything. You do, but at the same time, we're in this together. We're one. And, and, and when you're really operating as a team, and it's team first, and you're walking in love, it's like everything you do I appreciate. And we should be, if, if, you, if you're talking about healthy competition, we ought to be competing to see who can outdo one another without ever keeping the score and being real grateful for, for, for the things that are happening. 
Let's look at this. Poor listening. Poor listening. Now, I'm thinking now, how in the world can poor listening be a fruit of brokenness? Well, what do I mean by poor listening? You know, everything you say seems to trigger a self-centered story about that other person. I mean, you can't even get a word in. You, it's important to listen to people, but not to listen to people to see when they shut up and then you can say what you want to say. It's important to be a good listener. But I think something that's frustrating is that, you know, people are only listening to you and it, and it just seems to always uh, provoke a story about something concerning them, which, which just simply says, you, you just ain't paying no attention to what I said. What is it that calls a person to say, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but it's always about them? Well, it, it, you're a poor listener because it's not only hearing what somebody says, but it's, it's taking into consideration what they said, understand what they said, and maybe even talk about it a little further about what they said. But it always comes back to dealing with you. That's, that's poor listening. Can that be a part of brokenness? Yes. Somewhere along the line, somebody hurt your feelings and, and never, you know, you're still on the search for significance and you don't feel like you're significant enough and, 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 and you don't feel like you're getting the credit that you need. And, and so now you become a poor listener because you're trying to broadcast what nobody would listen to. That's brokenness. And that comes as a result of, of being broken. Let's look at the next one. Being judgmental. Oh, that's a big one. Let me start off by saying this. Judgment is messy. Judgment is messy. It's messy business. And no one likes to stick around someone who's judgmental. You see, everyone deserves to be treated with respect rather than feel like uh, their every move is being condemned. Nobody wants to feel like their every move is being condemned. Everybody deserves respect. And I'm telling you, when you become that person, no matter what, you just want to judge people. You want to be judgmental. It's messy. It's messy. Because in the middle of you being judgmental, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna start believing false truth. You're, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna, you're gonna miss it. You're going to take somebody who could have been a blessing in your life, somebody that could have been healing in your life, someone that could have been uh, uh, an, an, an uplifting piece of your life and, and disregard it because judgment is messy. It's messy business. What is it that brokenness does into the life of a person that causes them to be so, so judgmental? You got to really be hurting to be a judgmental person. It's just something about that person who's judgmental that I'm, I'm really hurting. I've been betrayed, I've been hurt, I've been stepped on, I've been confused, I feel like I'm nothing. And you know, what happens is that gives birth to the fruit of judgment. And sometimes you do it, don't even know it. But that's a part of that judge, judgmentalism. You shouldn't feel, nobody should have to feel like every move is being condemned. And that's where you've got to feel okay about you. As public people, Taff and I, we have to be strong enough to take criticism of the other people. You know, even during this time, if you, if you opened your church, people judge you and said, you shouldn't open your church, you're not being responsible. If you close your church, then people say, well, you don't have enough faith, that's why you close your church. Well you got to grow up and be a big port, big person. You got to say, you know what, I can take it, whatever. You got to always recognize that not everybody's going to be 100% with you. And you're just going to, I'm not going to be so broken that I crumble because somebody had something negative to say about me. I'm just not going to, to be like that. I mean, I recently, people with just nasty comments about, you ought to be ashamed of yourself having a cash app and having these people to pay you. And I'm thinking, I don't have no cash app. I don't even know how to work a cash app. And, and I'm like, you know, but I've got to be a big boy. I can't let that make me lose sleep and stress me out and all those other things, because what happens? Brokenness is trying to break. And you can't let brokenness break. Break who? Break you. 
And so you just have to realize that's how life is, that's how people are. Bring it on, I'm big enough to take it. Um, let's look at this one. I, 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 look at this one, money for me. Money for me is a result of brokenness. Money for me. And so if you're in a relationship, the money is not let us work as a team financially. The money is, that's money for me. I don't want to work as no team, money for me. I, I got to tell you something, when you become a part of a team, then the team owns the assets, not the individual. <laughs> not the individual. The team owns the assets. I uh, never will forget when I got married and Taffy came in and, and I had something, you know, we were putting our stuff in the apartment and she was like talking about, that's mine. And I'm like, whoa, I felt some kind of way like, oh, she just kind of claimed my stuff. And then I, then I realized, wait a minute, if she can do that, I can do that too. And I went and looked at her stuff. I'm like, oh, look at what I got here. It, at that time, we had the boom boxes, and I'm like, oh, I got a boom box right there. That's mine. See, it's okay when you're a team that my car is no longer my car, it's her car. And her car is no longer her car, it's my car. And brokenness somehow or another has you keeping the score, and you're kind of afraid to accept the responsibility. I mean, when we got married, we both were somewhat in debt. Her debt became my debt. My debt became her debt. And we came as a team and eliminated it. And uh, it's team first and no more individuals. We have to deal with our brokenness. We have to deal with things in our life. I remember when, you know, I had an aunt who was uh, kidnapped and found murdered in the trunk of her car. And she went out that night to pick some stuff up from the store and never came back home. And I never really sat down and explained that to my wife. That was an area of brokenness that I just, you know. So every time she went somewhere and I didn't quite know where she was, you know, she went somewhere, I think she was with a family member or something, came home late, but I didn't know where she was. I was freaking out. And, and so, you know, she paused. She said, what is this? And I explained the story to her. And I'm, you know, I'd never dealt with that brokenness. And, and so finally, I had so much fear about something happening to her, God spoke to me and he says, if anything ever happens to her, you're gonna have to take some credit for it. And I was like, I don't want that to happen. And, and got delivered from the brokenness. And so the fruit went away. I no longer had those issues any, anymore. The fruit went away as a result of that. I learned how important it was to treat my wife like a grown woman. Listen to me, man. Your wife is not a little girl. Your wife is not your little slave. And your wife is not somebody that, you know, has got to, you know, really get your permission before they do something. Your wife is a grown woman. You communicate to one another. Yes, absolutely. Share with one another. Yes, absolutely. But she's a grown woman. And I guess the greatest compliment that I got from my wife one day, um, when she came to me and she said, after, uh, after we talked about something that she did it, and she came to me and she said, thank you for treating me like a grown woman. And I never thought about that. I'm like, how many women who are married today fail to receive the treatment that a grown woman deserves? That somehow or another they got married and became a little girl again. You see, when a man does things like that, there's an area of brokenness like I had in my life that he's got to deal with. Because that woman of God, that woman of faith, that woman that gave birth to your children, that woman that loves you, that woman that cooks and takes care of you, that woman that does all that for you, deserves to be treated like a grown woman. I can hear you saying amen right now. R-A-T, amen. She's not your little girl and she's not your daughter. She's a grown woman. But sometimes it's brokenness that causes people to react that way. And when you resolve the brokenness, look what happens. The fruit goes away. Let's look at this next one. I got about two more I want to share with you. Not sharing power. In a relationship of any kind, not sharing power. I use these words, teamwork, compromise, give and take, to meet in the middle, teamwork, 
compromise, give and, give and take, a giving and a taking to meet in the middle. When you begin to do that, then I guarantee you, you can, it's the sharing of power. It's not domination. It's the sharing of power. You've heard Taffy talk over and over again that when Jesus came, he, he, he set the, the groundwork for equality. And we can all stand equal because of what Jesus has done. We're, biblical equality is not teaching sameness. Biblical equality is teaching the right to stand on equal ground so that whatever God's anointed the man to do, the woman can carry out her anointing. So likewise, we communicate. We are a team. We begin to compromise. We give and take and meet in the middle. We give and take and meet in the middle. But when there's not the willingness to, be, to have the sharing of power, what is it that's broke in your life that puts you in a position where you're afraid to share power? What is it? What is it? How many times have you been broken in that particular, particular area? There are some people who have been broken so many times in the same particular area, it almost seems like there's nothing else to break. There's so many, many, many pieces. And this can come as a result of that as well. The next one, you're sure about this one, lying. Yeah, lying. See, it, tear, it, tears, it, it tears people um, apart. It, it, it breaks bonds of trust. It, it causes hurt. Um, sometimes I know it feels pretty, like, accomplished if you can tell a lie to preserve uh, whatever friction that may have happened as a result of it, but it, it sends you back. It's like, you know, I don't know if I can trust you. I don't know, you know, you, you know, we had a bond. It's being torn apart. It's pretty rough in those areas. But can brokenness be the reason that people would prefer to lie than to deal with certain things? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's even how we carry ourselves. Sometimes we can portray a lie. Sometimes we can, you know, exemplify a lie. It's not always with the mouth, but sometimes I can be hurting and I don't say I'm hurting. And sometimes I can say I'm ashamed, and, and, and I'm, oh, I don't know how to say that. Sometimes I can walk in fear, and I don't know how to say that. And it's, uh, sometimes I can walk in rejection. I walked in on a tremendous amount of rejection and shame. And when I was able to share that rejection, when I was able to share that shame, I had someone that I trust that could kind of build me up, not tear me down, not beat me down. But they knew even in that situation, maybe it took time for this to to develop enough trust to become naked or vulnerable. You see, a lot of people, we live in false intimacy, and false intimacy produces a fake relationship. And the reason why the intimacy is fake is because there is no vulnerability. And wherever you are afraid to be vulnerable and then you pretend to have intimacy, that intimacy is fake because the pathway and the bridge to real intimacy is being vulnerable. And that's something that's hard for men to do. Brokenness can cause that. I mean, being vulnerable is how I get to real intimacy. And real intimacy is going to be a place where I now feel safe. Real intimacy is going to be a place where I have a real relationship. So I say it like this, fake marriage, because you have fake intimacy, because you don't have vulnerability. And just because you have a relationship doesn't mean that it's real. But can brokenness stop you from being vulnerable enough to produce a real relationship that came from real intimacy? And then the last thing I want to share, my time's all up. I'll just give you this last one real quick. Lust. Lust is a result of brokenness. I, I, I like to define lust like this, no self-control. <laughs> no self-control. One of the best ways to uh, combat your brokenness, in my opinion, is by reading the Word. God promised to deliver us from unresolved brokenness and make us whole again. Creflo Dollar dives deep into this topic that affects all believers and discloses relevant truths to help you overcome brokenness. 
Today's offer is a six-message series, How to Heal from Brokenness, and is available today for a love gift of $35 U.S. dollars or more. If he started the good work, he's going to finish the good work. Now, I don't know where you are. I don't, know, I don't know what ditch you've fallen into. I don't know what philosophy you've been buying lately. But if God started the work, he will finish the work. He will use every crazy thing in your life to make sure that the work is finished. Why? Because he is faithful. As an added bonus, we have combined the How to Heal from Brokenness series with the powerful CD, Heart of Nations. This combo can be yours for a love gift of 45 U.S. dollars or more. Don't miss this opportunity to order yours today. I pray that this broadcast blessed you today. I want you to pray about sowing a financial seed into this ministry. I also want to extend a special thanks to those of you who have remained our loyal partners, supporters, and friends. Your financial support goes a long, long way. Your donations help equip us with what we need to send this broadcast all over the world. And when you give to this ministry, you partner with us to reach people everywhere who are hurting and in need of the revelation of God's grace and love. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflowDollarMinistries.org. God bless you. Creflo and Taffy Dollar love connecting with you. And here at World Changers, we understand the importance of using technology to do just that. We're constantly working to bring the gospel of Christ to thousands of viewers and followers around the world. And we want you to get involved. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We want to make the word of grace available throughout every voice of social media. Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app brings you live church services direct to your smart TV and much more. You'll also get access to Changing Your World Network, streaming grace messages and exclusive content 24 hours a day right in the app. Get unlimited streaming through Roku, Amazon, and Apple TV absolutely free. Visit your app store. Download the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app now to start streaming. For more information, visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. Join us online as we bring you praise and worship from the World Changers Church family and the Word of God from pastors Creflo Dollar and Taffy Dollar. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.